Okay, so we're back and this time I'm going to be demonstrating a attempt to recover a disc, um, a CD I have deliberately scratched to see whether we can do it, um, but also to show you what the GUI state and all of the diagnostic information should look like when you have a disc you can't read very easily. So first I'm going to open the GUI. Okay, so if I go to disk information, you can see it's picked up on the drive here. So what I'm going to do is just put the disk in, let you just listen to the interesting noise it makes for a second, and then we'll get started. Okay, so we're seeing errors coming in here now, so that's good, because the first time I had to try a couple of times to even get it to take the disk. Okay, so it's noticed the disk's in there anyway, so we'll specify CD-ROM, and the log can be on my desktop, and I'll just call it cd.log, that's fine. And so the destination can also be there, and I will call that cd.image. That's fine. Um, so next we'll go through the settings. So because this disk is completely trashed, basically, I'm going to stick it on the best recovery mode, so it tries to read smaller chunks. And we'll start with reading forwards. I might change that. I'll show you what I'll show you how to restart the recovery as well if you need to do that for whatever reason. So we're going to have a lag here as it tries to figure out the block size it should read um, the block size DD rescue needs to use to read from the disk. Um, so if this takes a really long time, I will cut this out of the video recording so you don't have to sit through it. That's not so bad. Okay, so we just done. Oh, okay. I normally double check them. I shouldn't have. Um, that's fine. Oh, something is happening. I guess that's it trying to mount the disc. So maybe we will have some luck. Unable to read inode block, it says. So we'll open the detailed information because it will be useful for this one. And then we will hit start. I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, I have entered my password, so it should start trying to read stuff in a second. The disk is just taking so long to respond, it's probably delaying it. Here we go. So it tried to mount the disk. It has mounted the disk. We're not going to run the software though. So you can see stuff beginning to come in here. So there is some data it hasn't yet been able to read, so it's just sort of trying to skip over the damaged areas of the disk first, is what it's doing. So we're going to see if it can find some readable stuff and then it will come back over for a pass on the difficult stuff. I've really damaged this disk so I'm not sure how much readable stuff there's going to be, but we'll see. I'm just going to let you watch this for a second and put it in fast forward. Okay, so you can see that we have actually managed to read a whole 16 kilobytes of data in one minute. And it thinks it's going to take, both of these estimates say that it thinks it's going to take a very long time to read anything, which is probably quite accurate. Um, but the one in the terminal output is usually better if you have it. So I'm just going to show you a little trick here which is to set the read speed of the optical drive to one times because sometimes that gives you a small boost in terms of how quickly it manages to read stuff. I don't know why it doesn't do this itself, but it does help sometimes. So on Linux you can type sudo eject-x and then the name of your device, which in this case is slash dev slash cd -rom. It's weird because the commands eject 
oh, dash x, one, for one times. Um, it's weird because the commands eject, but it does work. So we'll do that. I'll pause it for a second while I enter my password. Okay, so this will normally hang for a bit because, here we go, that wasn't so bad. It will normally hang then because the disk is actually trying to do something and it takes a really long time to respond, but that wasn't so bad. And you can see we are actually pulling off little bits of data. So we might get something. But what I did notice earlier is if I bring up the file manager with that disk, here we go, it chugs for a minute, but it does actually list the files, or it did. I'll just shrink this window a bit. Let's see what it does. It did it last time. No? Okay. Well, before it listed the files in there, this is just an old Mondo disk from when I used to use that for my backups, when I used to back up to DVD, because that was a thing at some point. But as you can see, we're now reading 40 kilobytes, we've now read 40 kilobytes. Um, so it's going to take a while, but chances are we will get something off the disk, even if it's not very much. So I will pause this again and start fast forwarding it for you so you don't have to wait. Okay, so you're probably thinking at this point, it's been going for, what, 12 minutes, and we have read about 60 kilobytes. Uh, so, and at the moment it's trying to read around 84 megabytes on the disk. I think the disk has... how much does the disk have? So the disk only has 130 megabytes on it. If this was a larger disk, you might at this point be thinking, this is ridiculous. So I'm going to try the end of the disk instead which is fair enough. So I'll show you how you do that. So first thing is just hit abort and enter your password. Okay, so I'll tell you you aborted your recovery and the disk drive in this case will stop making those horrible noises. Um, so then you want to reset, which means password. Okay, so it took a couple of minutes of chugging before it finished trying to get disk information. I wonder what it says. Yes, it hasn't been able to figure out what the size is. Um, but we can still pick from the, op from the list here. So we use the same log file, the same map file as before, which is really important because if you don't do that, it will start your recovery from scratch, which is almost definitely not what you want. And then we will pick the same output file as before, which is also really important. So it will give us a warning here saying if we're using if we're doing a multi-stage recovery which is what we're doing here and we've selected a log file or a map file it will resume where it left off otherwise we will lose data this is fine because we've used the old we've used the same log file we're using the same output file and we're reading from the same disk that's fine so then go to the settings and at this point i can change any of these settings and it will be fine we won't lose any data so I'm going to go with best recovery again, and this time I'm going to tell it to read the disk backwards in case that has, in case that works a bit better because this is taking a very long time. <laughs> um, so we'll save the settings, and then we will start. Okay, so you can see it's remembered that we tried, that we rescued. 53 kilobytes and it tried three and a half kilobytes sorry <laughs> three and a half megabytes and it's now if you look at its position it's trying the end of the disk and going backwards and it also tells you how much data it hasn't tried to read yet which is about 120 megs so 
it now says copying non-tried blocks pass one backwards. So it's doing the same thing, it's just reading from the end of the disk. Um, and you can see the errors coming in here. So what it will do normally is it will try and copy all non-tried blocks. Once it's done that, it will hopefully have managed to read something and there will be a number of non-trimmed non blocks which you can see is filling up here. So then for each of those it will try and read from the start and the end of those blocks and hopefully get some more stuff and then what it will try and do is try and read all of the data inside those known bad parts of the disk. Hopefully then it will read something else and what it's left with are bad sectors and then it will retry those for as many times as you specify which in this case is two times, which is normally enough to get everything you're going to get off the disk. So, yeah, you can restart your recovery as many times as you like, as long as these three options at the top are the same. That's the only thing that is important. So, I am now going to leave you with a nice montage of progress, or maybe lack thereof, because this disk is completely trashed, and I will see you on the other side. Okay, so as you can see, it's been a couple of hours, and unfortunately we haven't really managed to read anything much. But I can imagine if I let this go for a longer time, we would eventually get something. But also bear in mind that I completely trashed this disc. I'll take a picture of it and use it as the thumbnail for the video, and then you can see what kind of a state it was in. But what I did was I took a... I took sandpaper to it. <coughs> and scuffed all over it, and then I did a test before I started the video, and it read it, somehow. So then I took more sandpaper to it, and I took a, screw a metal-tipped screwdriver to it and started scratching all over it. And that's the result we have now, where I've sort of damaged it too much. But, um, it does go to show how resilient the discs are. Because normally people would just have, like, one or two deep scratches, but most of everything else would probably be readable. And same goes for hard drives, unless they're really, really broken. There are normally, like, portions of the drive that are completely unreadable and other parts that are just merely difficult to read. So you'd normally expect to get quite a lot of data off it. Not necessarily all of it, but you might get quite a lot. So, um, at any rate, that's it for this video. I'm going to stop the recovery now. Um, and see you soon for more of these how-to videos.